Hello, this is Andrew Reby with Planet Solutions again. I would like to welcome you to another episode in a series of videos that explains the new features available to you in Cabinet Vision Solid 2012 Release 1. In this episode, we will be talking about the new door slides materials that allow you to easily create sliding doors in any of your assembly objects. Now, I've already started a new job and placed an assembly object on a wall and gone into the section view of that assembly. To see this new functionality, we need to go ahead and select one of the openings on the assembly. Let's select the doors for this one. Now that I've selected the doors, you can see the new slide door option. By selecting this option, we're letting Cabinet Vision know that this opening should be a set of sliding doors. Let's select that option to see what happens. Now you can see that I have a pair of sliding doors. Cool, huh? You should also notice that you have a few new options here on the sidebar doors quantity, which allows you to specify the number of doors that should be used, doors overlap, which allows you to specify the number of units, for this video it's inches, that the doors will overlap each other, and finally, left door on front, which allows you to specify whether or not the left door, relative to your view of the assembly, will be in front or not. Just a couple of notes. First, the doors quantity value cannot be set to less than two. If you try setting it to 1 or 0, Cabinet Vision will correct it and set it back to 2. The next note, when you have more than two doors, Cabinet Vision will stagger the doors from front to back. What I mean by this is if left door on front is set to yes and you have three doors, the left door will be in front, the second door will be in the back, and the third door will be in the front again, so on and so forth for all of your doors. If you have left door on front set to no, then it will be the reverse, the left door in the back, second door in the front, third door in the back, etc, etc. And that's how it works. Now that we have that taken care of, let's take a moment to bring up the material catalog so we can see how the slide rails are handled in Cabinet Vision. And here we have our material catalog. You should notice that we have a new tab, the slide tab. I'm going to go ahead and click on it to take a look. Since the general information section has no new options, we're just going to skip right over that. The door slide style lets us select what type of slides we're using. The slotted style refers to slides that require slots cut into the top and or bottoms of the doors. The hanging style refers to slides that use mounting hardware to hold the doors in place. When you select the hanging style, you can also select where the mounting plates will be placed. None means that no mounting plates are added. Back means that the hardware attaches to the back of the door, and top means that the mounting hardware attaches directly to the top of the door. Just like for the general information, we're going to skip over the texture section. Now we have our specific slide information. On the doors tab here, we can set up the door position for this slide. Let me go ahead and bring up a cutaway image of a pair of doors to illustrate this. Okay, now we can more easily see what's what. The inset from face allows you to specify the distance from the face of the assembly to the outside of the outer door. The gap between doors allows you to specify the distance between the doors. Gap above door allows you to specify the distance from the top of the doors to the, to the mounting shelf or top. The gap below door allows you to specify the distance from the bottom of the door to the top of the shelf or bottom. I didn't illustrate this, but you should get the idea. Now let's go ahead and check out the Slots tab. Okay, here you can see the options we have available to us for creating slots for these slides. Once again, I'm going to bring up an image to help illustrate this. Now that we have that up, let's get started on what every option does. Into Tops of Doors allows you to specify the slot that will be cut into the tops of the doors to receive the slide into bottom of doors is the same as the previous one but works for the bottom of the doors. Above doors allows the creation of a slot in the top or shelf that the doors will be hanging from while below doors does the same for the shelf or bottom that the doors will be sitting on. Now that we have those two taken care of we can look at the final tabs. You should notice that there aren't any right now. That's because the slide isn't set up to show them. First let me get rid of this image. Now I need to set the door slide style to hanging. That only added one tab. 
to get the final one, we need to change the mounting plate position from none to not none. Now that we have all the tabs showing, let's go ahead and select the rail tab. Just like before, I'm going to pull up a cutaway image to explain the options of this tab. Alright, the distance to first hole option allows you to specify the distance from the edge of the shelf or top to the center of the first hole that is drilled for the rail. Hole spacing allows you to set the distance between the centers of each hole. Bore hole diameter allows you to set the diameter of the hole. Bore hole depth allows you to set the depth of each hole created. To illustrate the last option, I will need to change the image. So the doors back to rail center allows you to specify the distance from the back of the door to the center of the rail. A couple of important notes for CNC users. The borehole diameter value needs to match exactly the diameter of your drill bits in your tool catalog or the S2M center will attempt to use other tools to drill the holes if it can. Also, the number of holes are determined by the length of the opening for the rail as well as the hole spacing value. Now let's move on to the plate tab. One final image to load to help with the last tabs. The distance from side of door to center of mounting plate allows you to, well, set the distance from the side of the door to the center of the mounting plate. The distance from top of door to center of mounting plate allows you to, yep, set the distance from the top of the door to the center of the mounting plate. I guess this tab was pretty self-explanatory. Now let's move over to the mounting tab. Okay, now this tab doesn't really need a whole lot of explanation. Basically, you can set the X and Y positions for the holes, as well as diameter and depth of the holes. Again, some notes for CNC users. First, setting the values here to zero, as you can see that hole number five is, will remove the hole. Secondly, make sure that you set the diameter of the holes to match a tool's diameter in your tool catalog. One really important final note that I want to make is this there is no material schedule for this type of material. If we look at the schedule menu, we can see there is no slide item available. Now if we look at our job properties dialog real quick, we can see that in our hardware tab, we do have a combo box that allows us to select a slide. This is going to pull directly from the material catalog. Thank you for taking the time to view this demonstration. If you would like more information on Cabinet Vision Solid, please feel free to visit the Cabinet Vision website at www.cabinetvision.com. For those of you viewing this video from eSupport, you can click on the hyperlink in this video to go there now.